It's the 2nd of July, and if you haven't cast your ballot already, no doubt you are itching for the opportunity to go down to your local primary school, exercise your right to a democracy sausage, and cast your vote. Thank you very much. The first part of the process is well known. You run the gauntlet of pollies and their volunteers trying to tell you how to vote. Have your name ticked off. Here's your House of Reps ballot paper. Grab your ballot paper and pencil and get your preferential voting game on. The vote goes into the ballot box, but then what? Well, when the clock strikes six o'clock, the polling centres lock their doors. The ballot boxes are opened, including some pre-poll votes taken in that electorate, and the count starts right there and then. All the first preference votes for the lower house are tallied and the result called through to the Electoral Commission HQ. The count then starts on the two-party preferred result, with the Electoral Commission picking the two candidates they reckon are likely to get the highest votes. That result is updated throughout the night and fed through to the media. We've got our first results coming through. Counting the Senate vote is a little bit more tricky. That, that, that's come down from there. All right, so let's, 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 those ballot papers are divided up into above and below the line votes. First preference figures are counted and the results are called through. But the full Senate count can take days to figure out. We have a winner. It's Greg Janet. After election night, the votes are counted and recounted. That's when postal and pre-poll declaration votes, or votes taken outside of an individual's electorate, are also thrown into the mix. All leading to a final declaration and the election of the 45th Parliament.